In this video, I'm going to start taking a deeper dive into how I built the Benchmark Division C tower. If you haven't already watched my previous video where I covered the basic rules, please watch that one first. Specifically, I want to talk about the overall approach I decided to take, and then show how I went from the rules to the exact shape of this design. Remember, what I'm going to present is not the only way to approach this problem. I hope you can learn from my process and modify it to be your own with whatever works best for you. So how do we go from the rules to a completed design? I don't like to build anything without some form of an assembly jig. The first step is to try and design the jig, but how do we go about building that? The first thing is to make sure you fully understand the rules. I can't emphasize this enough. You should know the rules well enough that you could be an event supervisor at a competition. If you recall from the rules video, this image is where we left off when thinking about the base of our tower that could achieve the bonus design. The three legs need to make contact in three separate quadrants and have the loading block be suspended in the middle. Because a non-bonus version of a symmetric equilateral triangle design wouldn't be much smaller than the one needed to span the circle, I'm fairly confident that going for the bonus is the best approach for this season. But definitely experiment with non-bonus designs if you get a chance. For my benchmark build, I only focused on the bonus design. Let's simplify things and only consider the triangular base itself. Here is a nice picture of an equilateral triangle. I hinted at the most difficult problem with this design in the rules video. Can you think of why this design is going to be difficult to execute? Feel free to pause the video if you want to give it some thought before I illustrate the problem. If you guess that square legs don't match up with 60 degree corners, then you are right. Here is a picture that illustrates the problem nicely. You can see that no matter how you rotate those legs, there is no way to get flat surfaces that we can attach our cross members to. Of course, there is an easy solution on paper, and that is to use triangular shaped legs. If we can use 60 by 60 by 60 degree triangular legs, then all of our problems with flat surfaces go away, and this tower becomes just as easy to build as a four leg tower with square legs. That will be my approach for implementing this design, but as we'll find out in future videos, that is easier said than done. As far as I know, there is nowhere to buy pre-made sticks like that, so we'll have to engineer them ourselves. I will have a dedicated video on exactly how I approach that problem, but for now, let's go back to designing the jig. This jig is actually quite simple to design, given the basic shape we know we need and the minimum height we need to achieve. I like to design in a 5mm buffer for the height, so we'll want the jig to be 50.5 centimeters tall. This jig is basically just an extruded triangle at an angle. First you pick a dimension for the base that will span the 29 centimeter circle. I chose a side length of 260 millimeters. I let the CAD program help me figure out the extrusion angle given I knew I wanted it to be 50.5 centimeters tall, and that angle turned out to be 7.17 degrees. That resulted in the top being just under 40 millimeters per side, which was plenty big enough for a 5x5 loading block. Unlike with four leg towers, our legs don't fit into nice grooves, but rather we need to cut off small sections of the jig so the legs will fit flat against the edges. Again, this is easy to do on paper, but presents some additional challenges when actually building these towers. I created a plane perpendicular to each edge and extruded a piece which could then be subtracted from the core triangular piece. The same concept was used for all three edges to cut out the side parts to give space for our cross members. One final thing I did was to cut out a giant cone from inside the jig. Not only did this reduce the jig mass and 3D print time, I later figured out it really helped with some of the construction steps which I'll demonstrate in a future video. Here is the finished jig. I encourage you to design and print your own, but if you'd like to experiment with mine, I will include the links to the STL files in the description of this video for the three separate sections of the jig. I recommend you tape the sections together like I have shown here, rather than trying to use glue. I have found this provides the best and easiest method to combine these pieces without introducing any unwanted gaps. In the next video, I will show how I approached making triangular legs that work well for this design. Thanks for watching and feel free to reach out to me with any specific questions.